And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, Breaking the Fourth Wall, presented by Comics Remixed. Episode 56. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me, my co host, Junior Ruiz. And, Junior, would you please introduce the book? Chris Book out his. Uh, well, Chris, you just introduced me, so I, I guess did. Junior has to know. Yeah, yeah well, just, yeah, Chris Book out sitting here on us again. Uh, not on us, but with us, excuse me. <laughs> Make sure to clarify that. <laughs> Yeah. What is with you and all the double entendre? I don't know, man. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so he's here hanging out with us and stuff. He's going to be a fly on the wall for this episode because we've got a special guest joining us on the show. As we've stated when we started doing Comics Remix, that we are fans doing a fan show. And uh, we like to support the indie guys because we're indie guys ourselves in what we do. So joining us from Michigan, we have indie writer and creator Aaron Moore. Aaron, say what's up, man. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Oh. All seven fans heard you. <laughs> right, yep, yep. <laughs> so, Aaron, you've uh, you've started an independent comic company called RIA, correct? Yes. Uh, yep. What does that stand for? Um, it stands for three separate things, actually. Um, it stands for Rage in Action, uh, which focuses on our, our normal books that are more mature, more um, not really for children. <laughs> Um, and then we have uh, Readers in Action, which is actually aimed more towards younger readers, um, more fun and adventure stories, um, things along that line. And then also uh, Real Indie Action, which is um, our original comic book uh, figures and mini statues and um, things like that where we're trying to get other indie creators involved and help distribute their works through, through what we're doing. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, how, that, is, that is pretty how cool. How the name can transition into different meanings there. I like that. And I, I like the fact how you're not yeah. just a, a publisher, but you're like doing all encompassing. Yeah, yeah. The, with the staff. Yeah, yeah. It was it was kind of just you know hit the ground running kind of a thing. Just kind of you know. You know what? Nowadays, with with everybody being able to do anything they want due to the internet and stuff like that, you kind of have to go mm-hmm. that mentality and just like you just yeah. said, hit the ground and you know. No, it's, 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 it's a good move. Yeah, know? no, totally. It's totally. Yeah. All right, so we yeah, were... And you, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, you know, and, and we were just we we're just ready to do it. We just, the meet, it, everything just kind of flowed together, came together, and it just happened. So we're, we're going with it. <laughs> well, before we get into the works, man, you just said we. So talk to us about everybody involved in RIA, and uh, let us know how it all became together. Well, the, you know, that's kind of the nice thing, you know, when I was, um, you know, originally started shopping, you know, for for artists looking, you know, really just saying, hey, I got the money, I got the means now, let, let's get one of my comics going. Uh, what I found out was is that there were just so many quality artists just ready to work, waiting and ready to work. So it kind of clicked in my head, well, maybe I should take this book and, and not just have it all about my story. I should open it up to everybody because it's a brand new universe. Um, having just my view on the world isn't, you know, it's, it's one-sided <laughs> for, for the most part. So I thought, you know, if I'm gonna have a whole brand new universe, I should have other people's perspectives on the world, other people's answers to what if they had superpowers. Um, and then from there, I, I got my writer friends, and then we found more artists, we found more artists, more artists, it just grew and grew and grew. And uh, basically, the main thing now is if you want to be published, if you're an indie creator, um, I'll work with you. I don't judge art. I don't judge anything. If you're ready, if you're willing and ready to work, we're we got teams waiting for you. <laughs> now you're saying you don't judge art. Is like, what if somebody walked in with like some stick figure art and you're just like, here, dude, you know, I want to work for you. Like, would you look at it and be like, seriously, man, or would you actually give it a chance? Well, yeah, I would give it a chance, but the thing is that it would probably be hard for them to form a team it'd probably be hard for them to find an inker and a colorist and maybe even somebody to write write a script um to do, and you know there, there's it, it goes both ways you know it has to be you know yeah like i said but if, if i get a page if i say you know you guys put together a team i get together i get a finished page yeah if it's stick figures as long as it's quality and the story's there and it tells it and it flows yeah why not that's a good way to look at it. Look That's awesome. Yeah. Be, be expecting something from me in the coming months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Why not, right? Well, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's another thing, you know. I mean, pe- there's so many people out there that just, they're just not going to get the chance to be published. You know, they might have, they might have what it takes to draw a page or color a page or ink a page or write a page or a whole book, but they're just, 
they just might not ever get that chance because there's so many teams that they're looking for somebody. They're looking for one team, three people to do do the whole run, do all the books, all the pages. We're here. We can mix it up, and everybody you know gets a chance to do at least one thing. So, is there anything specific that you look for when somebody submits to you and says, "Hey, I want to work with you"? Um, to be honest, I, I mean, I, I I would like to see see them at least have at least attempted attempted something before, you know. Yeah. Uh, just to say, you know, where I've had people say, "Well, I, I want to write," and which is fine, you know, and they'll give me a nice couple paragraphs, and I'll say, okay, well, let's, can you break it down into comic book frames so that when we hand it to an artist, it says, draw this on this frame, show them, this, show them looking this way, this expression, what's going on in the background, lighting, setting, you know, and then and then go from there. <laughs> so how long have you been, uh, been writing and creating? Oh, um, literally all my life, as far as that goes. Um, it's just now really having the means to afford comic book page art. Um, I think that that's a big, big part of why people can't get into comics. Um, it, it was the main thing that stopped me for over a decade um, when I seriously started writing, getting these comics uh, wrote down uh, in page, page layouts. Um, you know, I was begging artist friends for years and years, stop, stop painting, stop being fine artists, start drawing comic books, start drawing comic books. Because another part of it was, yes, yeah, I wanted to bring up all my friends and everybody, you know, all my artist friends with me. Like, hey, let's get something going. Let's all get it going. But, you know, you have to find somebody that wants to draw comics. And it's kind of similar how, to how this show works. Because when, uh, yeah. when I started Comics Remixed, I pretty much went to people who I felt belonged. And most of those people were already, like, friends of mine. You right. Know, so you, you try to, you know, bring up the guys that are... Uh, gonna stick with you with it you know ain't that right brian absolutely <laughs> right um right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so how long has ria been around now um two years two years two okay. years now um yeah we started working on our first book a couple years ago and it's just finally starting to get a couple fans <laughs> <laughs> well you have you found the process to be a lot more difficult than you imagined it to be yeah, you know, I, I found it both easy and difficult. Um, once, you know, once, you know, a couple of years ago, about three years ago, Kickstarter just said, "Hey, if you want to do a, if if you want to do a comic, it's possible now. You can raise funds, you can get a team, you can make some money, and pay the artist and get a book." And that's kind of where it clicked with me. That's where I just kind of said, "You know what? I'm just gonna stop what I'm doing right now and just start pushing this comic thing." Full, full speed. I had some artists that were ready to work, and um, and yeah, since then I've just been moving full steam ahead with it. So, I mean, you and I are friends on Facebook. You know, I, I try to friend right. as many indie creators as I possibly can. Same with Brian. Um, you know, because yeah. we do the show, we promote the show, and then we also look on our news feeds and we see when people post their work and stuff. And you know, Brian and I discuss. You know, hey, I saw this on my feed pretty good stuff let's think about having this guy or a woman on the show and we take it from there um right. that being said since you're on my feed i've seen a lot of posts for if powers you know i've seen covers i've seen right. prints i've seen uh, and we were also fortunate enough for you to go ahead and uh, forward us some of the sample work so um as we're discussing this at the moment brian's on his tablet looking at the if power stuff um okay. so tell us about if powers because i i Some very interesting costume designs by the way <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's always pe people's first thing is just like, oh, we just we love the characters and and the uh, yeah, the design is a is a big part, plays a major major role in the story itself. Um, a big question when designing the characters is why, you know, why do they look like this? Why why did this happen? Um, you know, why is the main character missing an arm? Well, you'll find that out in the third issue. You know. <laughs> so as I was um, um, as I was scrolling through the if powers. I've noticed it comes across as an anthology book to me. Right. Um, is that how it was meant to be? No, no. Um, yeah, that, it gets confused a lot, and I, I, I completely understand that because we're I, I kind of went at storytelling at a different at a side side you know sideways. Um, basically, the the I have this whole story written out ready for comic books, and then like I said, I opened it up. Um, 
to everybody to be able to create their own characters if they had powers, if they were in this universe. And it basically comes down to being a random day in the life of that character that is now going to be integrated into the main story. So as you read as you read the books now, you're gonna get you're gonna get stories of stuff that I had planned for issue ten, twenty and on. But now as you read the book, the entire universe is gonna be brought to you all at once through different timelines to explain why this happened, why that happened, and, and answer all your questions, hopefully. So pretty much as the issues continue, the stories here will continue to unfold and it'll make more sense as you continue to read. Yep, exactly. Yep, okay. it's, it's all one. It, it appears to be an anthology as far as the different teams and the different stories, but as you read it, you'll see, okay, well, since this happened eight years ago, now this explains why they're doing this four years later now explains why this is happening in the present time gotcha and yeah it's a uh, it, i do require a little bit of mental you know thinking on the reader's part but i hope that they enjoy that and that you know when you leave the book feeling more of an experience than being forced to just read dialogue and, and look at art for page after page see i like that i like how you phrase that because there's a lot of uh creators out there now more specifically they work for the big two whereas it's the story or not even the story, but the dialogue kind of takes a back seat to the yeah. art, and they let the art do the storytelling with just some, you know, words thrown here and there. We're scrolling through right. this. I've noticed that they both play an equal amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the dialogue, um, basically, especially because how much page art costs. <laughs> you know, there's no reason to to pay to have somebody draw, you know, random babbling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've always, I've joked for years, and it just seems like, especially now, a lot with the big two, if you read the first page and you read the last page, you get the entire issue. Yeah, he's got a you point know? there. <laughs> and so I, I just kind of, I kind of went with that format, so I made every every page, every two pages, every, you know, short story, basically one, just one little epic thing, one after another, not just, you know... Oh, and then two weeks later, we decided to do this, and here's Brian with his superpowers. And, you know, there's a lot of comics where they'll spend ten pages just introducing somebody and explaining why they can run fast, or who knows. <laughs> so I'm looking at the cover to If Powers, number one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, explain to me the characters on the cover. Okay, um, so yeah, the, the main story... Uh, revolves around a family, a family drama. Um, even though this is a planet where every single person has superpowers, um, at some level, at you know, at some point, everybody's just kind of level. You know, everybody can do something. So, I, I took it from that point, and then I said, okay, well, now here's a family that lives in this world, and what are some of the the drama? What are some of the problems that they face? Um, and basically, what it is is that um, this mother and daughter were raised by this maniac villain I mean he just um, you know he controlled areas of the world he, he just kills and kills and kills just ruthless uh, he has no respect for his family anybody uh, so basically they split they, they leave him and they and they're just trying to escape uh, his grasp and, and literally not be murdered by him it's kind of a dark and deep story but <laughs> it's just uh, you know it's kind of how the world is sometimes you know now, is everybody in this universe born with powers? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so, yeah, I kind of went at it um, two different ways. Um, there are some people that don't realize their power until they actually need it or attempt to use it. Um, and then I've also started something that I'm not sure controversy or not, but um, there's a lot of people that start their powers and they have it while in the womb, and it affects people around the pregnant mother. Hmm. So, I mean, there's... Yeah, I've kind of... I've kind of... Because... You know, there's millions of people, and there's the opportunity for every little, tiny, different power. Um, I just tried to explore that on, on every level. Oh, that's that's pretty interesting. That's that's definitely something yeah. fresh. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, most definitely. But I, had a, I had a question. Are you going with the if moniker on all your books? Uh, no, I just um, uh, a long time ago I started I started the big three. Um, it's just kind of you know when you're around with your friends or just anybody really. You, you always ask, you know, what would you do if zombies attacked? What what superpower would you have? And what would you do if you won the lottery? So I basically took those three questions instead of giving a one to two line answer, 
turn them into epic uh, experiences. <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. I didn't think about that. No, it's... Yeah. See, that's original stuff. Yeah, no, totally. That's stuff you don't really... Like, that's you stuff can go you to don't the local... get from the big two. Or, yeah, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And, it, and when you think about it, it, and it's also... It's simple, you know? It's like, yeah, you, you know, you do ask your friends what would you do if you won the lottery. You do ask your friends what superpower you would have. And so I just, I just grew on that. <laughs> So let's talk about some of the creators that are working with you. What are, what are some of the okay. writers that uh, that have contributed to helping your dream come true? Well, um, Sam and Kim Eagleston, they're two uh, local MI writers actually in the UP, and they are just, uh, in my opinion, just blowing up in the indie world. They're, they're writing, they're putting together teams, they're releasing book after book after book. Um, so it was really kind of a a no-brainer for me to say, hey, I need you guys to, you know, come and do do some stories for me, uh, which, of course, they were more than happy to do, and um, and then also led to other artists and other people saying, well, hey, you know, if you're working with these people, we'll work with you. Um, uh, some other writers, um, uh, Dirk Manning, he's, of course, just major in the indie comic world right now. Um, yeah. Especially, uh, you know, here in the Midwest, you know, where he gets to do a lot of his con touring and conventions and stuff so again just a, uh, another no-brainer <laughs> you know just uh, he actually he actually came to me I put out a I put out a public uh, blast uh, about a year or so ago saying hey you know if you're interested uh, send me an email and he was one of the people who sent me an email so I was just like yes of course you're on a project right now <laughs> like were you surprised by that one yeah yeah that I mean that was that was surprising and then um, basically anybody who said yes I was Nice. You know, because here I am, here I am saying, hey, uh, take, you know, take a leap of faith with me, you know, work on a book with me, um, especially when everybody, it was one of those, you know, the white, the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, which again is another great, which is why I think the book came out so good so far is, you know, all these people are working on these little, little tiny adventures that for the most part outside of each other until they were put together in the book didn't have much to do with each other at all. Right. <laughs> So, I mean, it was just, I mean, and I have books, I have stories where the stories merge together and come together that had different art teams for the different short stories, but they both come together so perfectly. It's just, um, it, it's, it's been pretty mind-blowing. But yeah, I mean, there's creators, writers. We have a writer from Australia. We have artists from the Philippines, um, all just all over the world, Every pretty much every country. Have you uh, have you set up booths at uh, any of the local shows around here to promote? You know, I have, but um, not not as much as I should have, because um, I also do like rare toys and things like that. So most of the times I set up at shows, I, I do that, and I'll just have like a small corner with, with like a sample of stuff for people to look at. So no, I haven't really yet had the chance to take a pile of books or prints or shirts or anything anywhere yet. Well, you said small toys, but, so that's something we'll have to talk about later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but uh, it's definitely my plan. Uh, let's talk about uh, if zombies. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So, what's if zombies about? Because uh, we saw uh, the uh, the video sample. I mean, we've got we got the email yeah. with all the samples you sent us. Right. Uh, right. And we watched them all, and so I want to go oh. through each and every one. You know, because this, like we said earlier, this is a show where we want you know to help the indies. So help promote away. Oh. You know. So yeah, run us I, through. We appreciate it. Oh, no problem, man. Uh, run us through if zombies. What what is if zombies? Okay, so yeah, it's um, basically you know what if zombies attacked, um, and this is my my take on it. Um, basically, um, I you know not to you know alienate anybody, but I've never really enjoyed anything zombie ish um, ever. <laughs> People have always tried to turn me on to Dawn of the Dead and this and that. And, you know, while they're fun, I've always said, oh, I don't think zombies should do this, or I don't think that this should happen. And, and everybody's everybody's answer is, well, if you think you can do better, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I just, again, I just took that on my own. I said, you know, well, I have an idea for zombies. Um, and basically, yeah, it starts with um, two buddies just hanging out, and then all of a sudden they have to deal with the realization that they're zombies now, and they have to um, get take to the streets and and take them out. Um, but the, the, the part of it that I wanted to get at was the reason the zombies were attacking. Yeah, I was going to say, there's um, a stigma in the air 
for zombie things right now, and uh, you know, a big one yeah. obviously is uh, The Walking Dead. And while right. The Walking Dead is as popular as it is, they've yet to explain in the comics and in the TV show why the zombies are even there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. That's just I've. I haven't read it. I haven't watched it. I, I, I have enjoyed the video games a little bit because those are. I just like uh, Telltale games for the people out there. Are, um, the games are pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just uh, everything that, that that company does, the way that they put together the games, uh, the way you can just play it like it's a movie. Um, I mean, that that's that stuff's entertaining. Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. like, if somebody, I'm sure you've already probably had. Uh, Walking Dead comparisons or Dawn of the Dead comparisons and stuff. What do you tell yeah. people when they ask you what separates if zombies from all the the other zombie stuff that the market is currently, I guess, infatuated with? Yeah, I actually had somebody start trolling me the other day with it. But my 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 thing is, you know, I started writing this book, uh, you know, a couple years before the first issue even came out for that for the comic series to begin with. Um, so, I mean, then again, the other thing is, you know, what if zombies attacked as a concept much older than AMC Movie Channel, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or it's, uh, it's a concept that, it's a, again, it's one of those three major questions. It just happens to be one of those things that, you know, um, comic book, nerdy, video gamey people, it's just something we talk about. It's something we, it's why we have baseball bats in the corner, because we think, well, if zombies attack, there's my shotgun. There's, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? It it, um, it really has. It, I think that it's one of those things ingrained in humanity, just in general, has li- little to do with with a comic book or a TV show. Um, just that's just kind of my opinion. You know, it's 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 one of those. It's zombies are just a have always been a scary thing. So who's? And I get, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say another major point of the of the book is to point out how much more dangerous and frightening human beings can be compared to any any zombie. That's pretty interesting. I mean, yeah. you see zombies. Oh, zombies! Right away, yeah. get scared. But we do know that the the human race does have an ugly face to it. You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if 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 a horde of real humans were attacking instead of zombies, wherever they were going would just take take over. You know. Right. Right. You know, so it's just yeah, especially if they're armed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So who's the who's the creative team on if zombies? Uh, so this is uh, this is me writing, and then uh, Jordan uh, Johnson, another uh, local Michigan artist, uh, is doing the art, um, and he's he's just blowing up. I mean, he's doing books. He's he's writing now. He's writing and drawing his own books. Um, he's being published, so he's just been kind of busy, um, and it's my hope to uh, get him back on this book. But I'm also going to be taking it in the same direction as If Powers and um, opening it up to many stories because. There's so many small detailed parts of the story that will never get told uh, unless I do it that way because um, the way that I have it written and the pages laid out is it it's like a real time um, comic. Every single frame leads into the the next one. There's no the day after. There's no there's no pan across. Um, every single frame focused directly on the main character and exactly what he's doing at that moment in time. Interesting. So. To be able to open up the story and do short stories outside of that is going to help tell a lot more. I like the artwork on that book. It's very. It reminds me of uh, Otley. Okay, it's Ryan, Ryan Otley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, once you know, once Jordan gave me a couple samples of this style, I was like, this is definitely the style because I wanted I wanted it to be black and white. I wanted it to feel horror like a horror book, you know. And uh, yeah, he just he just kept blowing me away with every single frame. So I, you know, it's understandable why he got picked up and he's doing books now. You know. <laughs> you know, one thing would, that would catch, like, really catch my eye if I was scrolling through the, uh, the racks at a local shop, um, would be how kind of how they did the Sin City movies, where it's all black and white, but with a little bit of color. With a little bit of color, I think that'd be yep. like all blood would be painted red, and then just the rest of the comic in black and white. I think that'd be really wicked because I don't, I've never seen an actual comic done in that fashion. Sin City. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Frank Miller right. did all the books like that. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My mistake. Yeah, I actually do have a test cover for the cover here where I put blood on the bat and his shirt and stuff, and there's just yes. a little, little bit of red splash. But then, you know, I, I'm just looking at it, and I think yeah, a, a big part of it is, is I like the interior art to be the same as the cover art. A lot of times you, you get 
uh, especially a lot of indie books, sadly, they get the switcheroo. Yeah. You know? Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, I think it's just, it's it stands out. It just says, you know, it's quality art. <laughs> moving on, we've while, got... While still being indie, <laughs> you know? Well, moving on, we got your all-ages book uh, featuring Pirates, okay. Magic, and Adventure, Captain Zabibi? Yep, yep. All right, the man. Seven Summoners. And the Seven Summoners, that's right. I like that. All right, yeah. so uh, I watched the preview to this one as well. Um, I really didn't get much from the preview. Right, other than right. The, the, the two children have, uh, they're looking forward to bedtime, basically. Right, And yeah. Grandfather's Tales. Yeah, and Grandfather's Tales. So yep. I automatically, in my own head, pieced together that for some reason, I mean, you don't even have to tell me if I'm right, because especially if it's a, a something that will spoil it, um, right. But I have a feeling that the grandfather is actually somebody who's lived these tales personally, yep, which yep, is why yep. he's uh, the, the 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 stories are so detailed to the, to grab these children's attention the way they have. Yep, 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 yep. You got it. <laughs> nice. I, I have to tell you, I thought this looked very interesting for an all ages book. Okay. And if I had seven hundred seventy seven dollars <laughs> to hit your GoFundMe, I totally would, so I could be the sixth summoner. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, yeah. I think, I, uh, I think that's I, really I, cool. I, I decided to open that up, the, the sixth summoner. I just thought, you know, it's 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 fur it's further enough in the book that I could rewrite things if they needed to be. For that for that character, you know. Right. I, I think it's very cool that on your Kickstarter that you you know actually put in that people could if with a certain donation you could be written in as a character. Right. I think that's really a a nice uh, incentive for people yeah. to donate to yeah. your fund versus just oh yeah. I'm gonna give you a free book which is like what everybody does. Right. Right. Yeah, and it's you know it's just it's it's to be fun also you know I like to think that you know somebody would do it for their kid to have their kid be a part of it or or something like that you know Um, but yeah it's all about options also you know just trying to give people options. So from from what I saw of this, it's I'm like super interested in it. It's like one of those things that's not kind of lacking in the medium today is like lighthearted, kind of fun looking yeah that's that's yeah right. you know i was gonna say that because the artwork is very detailed yet very simple mm-hmm. i like that yeah it almost yeah, reminds me of um super dinosaur kind of reminds me of samurai okay. jack that too yeah 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 all right so yeah, go ahead um, and give us a quick uh a quick rundown on what this book is uh okay well the artist is uh, uh richard Richard Michael Johnson, who is the cousin of Jordan, who's doing it zombies, so that's how I kind of got in with him. Um, and basically, yeah, um, I went to him with this idea uh, for, for Captain Zabibi, and um, we actually started co-writing the book, and how it runs down is, yeah, how you, you guys are basically saying, um, uh, the kids, they're, um, they, they stay with their grandfather every summer, and uh, during these nights during the summer, he gets to tell them another tale of of his adventures with Captain Zabibi. Uh, so it's just, it's just something that they, they can't wait for. You know, they're, they're just scarfing their food down. They're racing each other up the steps and, and racing into bed to be the one who gets to pick, which is the new story. Because, um, the way we have it, the way we have it now is that he's already told them a couple of stories and those will be the short stories that we put into the book that other artists will draw. Um, if that makes sense. Um, for instance, there's Captain Zabibi and the, and the skeleton's ruby. So basically, you know, so after, while you're reading this book, there's going to be a couple pages at the end of the book that deal with that story, and then in issue two, there'll be more pages, and, and so on. Gotcha. Um, that's that's yeah. very, like, an Alan Moore-esque type yeah. of thing to do. It's, I like that stuff. Oh, thanks. Yeah, he's a, <laughs> Brian's a big Alan Moore fan, actually. We're working on the uh, the re, revamping of the ComicsRemix.com website, and okay. uh, we added an About Us section. So his okay. profile photo is uh, a nod to uh, Alan Moore's famous uh, photo where he's got his hair in front of his face and stuff. Oh, I'll have to check that out, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're looking through some of the uh, the artwork here, the pinups of the characters. And uh, uh-huh. the the art of Captain Zavivi himself on the brown perch-looking uh, paper. Yeah. Sick. We're all sitting here yeah. nodding our heads. That's out. very cool. This is very sick. <clears throat> And then as you scroll yeah. down, we've got uh, the, boys. the boys. Yeah, the hair yeah. reminds me of Dragon Ball Z. I like totally. that. Totally. You know. Yeah, that's 
Yeah, we, we, we went at it art-wise. Dragon Ball meets Zelda meets uh, Final Fantasy. You know what? You, can, you can see it. It shows. It really does. Yeah. And Hang Ten, yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's almost yeah. like a Venture Brothers kind of name for a character. <laughs> I yeah. like that. It, it, Very cool. The, the artwork... Be, go ahead. I was going to say, there's going to be similar similar fighting styles. You know, there's going to be, you know, um, there's going to be people flying. There's going to be fast movement. There's going to be energy. Um it's, so it's, it's just going to be real action-packed. Like the art here, especially with Hang Ten, reminds me of uh, Chris Bacciolo. The only difference... Okay. I, I just did I wasn't a fan of Chris Bacciolo. <laughs> but this, <laughs> like the style, this style looks a lot cleaner. I think that was the difference because Chris Bacciolo was very, like later on, very detailed, very uh, heavy with the inks and the and the shadowing. Right. Uh, with this, right. And then looks what's... very clean and you could actually tell what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, and we have, I actually, I've been cleaning up these photos even more, um, and I got more samples here that I'd probably be adding to it today. Um, so yeah, um, we, he's, he's, he's drawn um, seven, no, he's drawn six summoners so far. You know, he hasn't drawn the sixth yet. So, um, he's drawn six for the seven. we've also got this character with the uh, Princess Leia hair buns. Uh, oh, yep, yep. Tox. Tox. So tell us yep. about Tox, because this is an interesting design. Uh, the white queen, okay, well, uh, like uh, robe, and the princess Leia hair. <laughs> right, and she summons the O lion instead of Lion O. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but uh, she's actually a callback to uh, If Powers, uh, where the main character, her name is uh, Pyrea Tox, and. Um, but no, and she, no relation. No relation. No, just just a callback and kind of a mimic to her powers, where her her father is Asian and her mother's. Uh, Caucasian, so Tox is kind of a mix also, but you don't see her face uh, in the comic book because her face was melted by acid, and that's why she wears a helmet uh, in If Powers. Um, so we got to have fun with her face in this one, and also um, in If Powers, she's able to manifest, um, I don't know if you noticed the red scarring over her body, but um, that grows as she goes into defensive and offensive modes, and she can summon, basic form a, a fiery blade and fiery armor to protect herself. Um, so in this one, she also has a, a fiery sword. Yeah. So it's, it's it's pretty much the same character, but I just took it and brought her into the kid's world and made it more fun and adventure and, and more human. Nice. That's very cool. I, I dig the summoning idea, kind of like you said, the, the Final Fantasy nod. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, and um, so, yeah, basically what it is is, you know, the grandfather's just kind of sneaking around an old abandoned um, uh, cathedral, basically is how it would look in this kingdom, just kind of think, you know, Assassin's Creed in your mind. <laughs> and he comes across the BB talking to the king, and he gets ordered to um, basically hunt down, and it sounds a little hardcore for a kid's thing, but he, you know, he's, he's supposed to, he's meant to take the power away from these summoners to save the world. So and the grandfather uh, hitchhikes a ride on there and sneaks aboard. <laughs> We see also here that uh, with an asterisk that you guys are working on 3D printed statues of Zabibi. Yep. How's that coming yep. along? Um, well, uh, I don't know if, you, if you've seen any of the If Power statues that we've uh, been doing, but um, yeah, we're uh, basically the next one I'm going to do is a, a Zabibi statue. Um, again, that's part of the uh, real indie action part of RIA. Nice. Um, I, I started, I I already have, um, I wanted to do like, you know when you get blind boxes where it could have like one of ten different figures in it. Yeah, the chance yeah. of getting this one or this one. That's that's why I started this. I have uh, about eight figures now and I got the designs, the boxes all designed up and everything. And so my plan is at conventions, I'm going to have that and you'll have the chance of getting the BB one out of every five and then there'll be a chance of getting, you know, this character, this character. Um, and then I've opened it up to my other friends that do indie comics, so there'll be other original characters from other comic books that'll be part of it also. Very nice. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the, well, the, the, the BB statue will be offered separately. Yeah. Um, and we're, and we're going to be doing this actually in a much higher quality um, version than, than the minifigures. This will be meant to be like a, a statue that you can really paint, and it'll, it'll probably cost 100 bucks or so just to point that out. <laughs> How big would it be? That's going to be seven and a half inches. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. 
but it's going to be, it's going to be highly detailed. And I mean, as far as uh, it'll be limited, I mean, as far as limited models and stuff go, it's it's going to be very very reasonably priced uh, compared to what you you think you would pay. <laughs> well, I'm a big statue guy, so that's probably something I'd uh, I think about checking out. I'm not going to BS yeah. you on that. Yeah. I mean, we'll make sure that it's beyond worth it. I mean, it'll be it'll be on a nice stand, signed, you know, limited, all that, all that good stuff. You know, nice. we're we're still getting it down, but um, the person that we have uh, doing our um, doing creating our models, he is just mind blowing, amazing. I'm actually I'm working on a model right a model right now that he put together for um, the Bleach anime series. So I don't really know exactly what he does as far as getting the stuff in the market, but. He's just amazing. <laughs> well, man, it sounds like you've got uh, you've got your head on your shoulders, and you're ready to just just do it. You know, like for lack of a better term. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell the the listeners where they can find RIA right now. Um, uh, well, the best place is just Facebook. You know, if you Google it, uh, RIA Comics, Rage in Action. If you Google F Powers, it's it's just the first thing to come up. Um. Uh, you know, if you're following these, if you're following you guys on Facebook, um, you'll probably see me liking the posts, uh, sharing some stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if you found this podcast, you, I'll probably be close behind you, be able to find that. <laughs> and if uh, if any of the indie writers or creators right now out there are listening to this and uh, they're hearing about you for the first time, how can they get in contact with you? Um, they can they can email me directly at ifzombies at gmail dot com. Um, I also, I just yesterday, I started a public group on Facebook uh, for RIA Comics. Um, that's meant for all the creators, future creators, fans, everybody. Um, there's links there with uh, to the free samples, to uh, all the GoFundMes, and the ZBB crowdfunding, all that good stuff. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Well, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I'm actually very anxious to see where all this goes. You know, uh, Comics Remix and the Spinner Rack will be there every step of the mm-hmm. way to help promote you. It's, it's very interesting. Oh, thank you. It I'm is. I'm like super thank looking you. forward to Captain Zubia. It's yeah. kind of, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're getting a lot of positive, a lot of positive stuff from that because it, it's I, different. You know? I think Brian just wants to be drawn into the yeah. book. He wants to be a summoner. <laughs> well, you know, you know, we might be, you know, we might just be able to work something out support wise. You know, you know, there's, there's gonna be, there's gonna be some characters in the book, so we, nice. you know, we can figure something out. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah well, I'm sure the artist would, would big like fat some guys in comic books. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, there's, there's roles for that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> as long as he's not a sumo or the blob, I'm okay with. That. <laughs> yeah. We we already have character design for the sumo done already. Sorry. Uh, you're good, Brian. <laughs> All right. You're good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, man, we're uh, speaking for myself and for Brian. Uh, we're we're really looking forward to this, man. Um, you know, it's it's not every day that we get to talk to an indie creator pretty much at the same level that we're at in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. You know, um, yeah. We look at it as you know two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. You know, a oh, lot yeah. Of, oh, yeah. A lot of times guys are just like, yeah, you know, another podcast. And then they just, you know, you don't hear from them oh, or yeah. whatever. And it's like, you know what? No, man. It's like you scratch our back, we scratch yours. You know, that's that's how it works. Right. You know, that's how we actually started the show in, you know, four and a half years and we're still here. So. Right. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm going to share your podcast. You're going to share my stuff. My yeah. people see yours. But your people see mine. Well, that's just how it is. That's just, that's the, that's a great thing about social media right now. You're just able to just. Do things. Yeah, that's, that's the great yeah. thing about the internet in general. Like he was mentioning yeah. earlier, having writers from other places, artists, writers, from, all, writers, writers. Writers from other places, artists yep. from all over the world. Right, it's yeah. awesome, man. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, Aaron, thank yeah, you man. again so much for uh, taking the time to be on the show. Uh, we well, really, really appreciate it. Um, if you decide to, uh, you're hanging out in the Chicagoland area, be sure to hit us up, man. Um, you know, if you're gonna oh, do. Yeah. C2E2 or a Wizard World or whatever smaller cons in the area, you know, we'll be glad to come through, help you show some, uh, show some support, you know, help try to get the, uh, the word out there, you know, why not? I, yeah, I, oh man, I appreciate I, I'd it. like to see a lot of this stuff at a, a, a comic yeah, shop no, and walk totally. in there, you know. Totally, it would be cool. Get in on the ground floor, like, right. I was there before it all started, man, right. I believed in it, you know. Absolutely. Right. It gives you those bragging rights. <laughs> those bragging rights are always sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Aaron, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, 
listeners, as always, you can go to change.org, sign our JDF versus CM Punk petition. You know, we all want to see CM Punk get his teeth knocked in. Um, you can follow us at Twitter at Comics Remixed at the Spinner Rack. Email us individually, Junior, Brian, or Alex at comicsremixed.com. Uh, am I missing anything, Brian? Check out Alex's toy reviews. Yes. Reviews remixed. Remixed reviews. I said that backwards. Yes, you did. I've got dyslexia. It's. I used to say it backwards all the yeah, time. It happens. But uh, yeah, check his stuff out on YouTube. Uh, his latest episode was him uh, reviewing his experience at BotCon a couple weeks back. So check that out. Um, and don't forget, check out Aaron Moore and RIA, RIA Comics. It's a tongue twister. Totally. Again, <laughs> man, thanks for being on the show. Uh, looking forward to your work. Yep. Thank you guys too. Thank you. All right, Aaron. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.